Welcome back to Hidden in the Stars. In this episode of Astronomy Meets History, we examine the Carrington event. A special thank you to our viewer ZW for suggesting this topic. The Carrington event was the most intense geomagnetic storm in history and occurred on September 1st and 2nd, 1859. Thought to be the result of a coronal mass ejection known as the CME from the sun, it was responsible for auroras visible worldwide, similar to the one seen here, taken on May 24, 2010, from the International Space Station. Space.com reports that, during the Carrington event, the aurora borealis was visible as far south as Cuba. The event was first noted independently by British astronomers Richard Hodgson and Richard Carrington, for whom the event is named. They reported observations of a solar flare, a relatively intense localized emission of electromagnetic radiation in the sun's atmosphere. In his own words, Carrington observed, quote, a moderate but very marked disturbance took place at about 11 hours, 20 minutes a.m., September 1st, of short duration, and that towards four hours after midnight there commenced a great magnetic storm which subsequent accounts established to have been as considerable in the southern as in the northern hemisphere. His drawing of the event is included here. Hodgson's account is similar. While observing a group of solar spots on the 1st of September, I was suddenly surprised at the appearance of a very brilliant star of light, much brighter than the sun's surface, most dazzling to the protected eye, illuminating the upper edges of the adjacent spots and streaks, not unlike, in effect, the edging of the clouds at sunset. It lasted for some five minutes and disappeared instantaneously about 11.25 a.m. The phenomenon was of too short duration to admit of a micrometrical drawing, but an eye sketch was taken. One curious effect of this coronal mass ejection was the disruption to telegraph wires. According to sources at the time, several telegraph operators received shocks and wires caught fire. An article in the American Journal of Science from 1859 stated, quote, these electrical perturbations were recorded not only by the usual magnetic instruments, but over the whole system of telegraphic wires, especially in New England and the Canadas. The magnetic induction either greatly interfered with or prevented the working of the lines by the usual voltaic current, while in more than one case the north and south lines were worked during the daytime of September 3rd solely by atmospheric influence. This major CME event traveled the 150 million kilometer distance between the Sun and Earth in just 17.6 hours, much faster than the multi-day period it usually takes CMEs to reach the distance of Earth's orbit. Scientists now believe that a smaller CME erupted from the Sun in late August and effectively cleared the path between the Earth and the Sun of most of the solar wind plasma that would normally slow down a coronal mass ejection. Historical evidence in the form of carbon-14 trapped and preserved in tree rings indicates that the previous similarly energetic CME event to the one in 1859 occurred in 774. A near miss occurred on July 23, 2012, when a similarly sized coronal mass ejection missed the Earth by nine days. Of course, technology has advanced significantly since 1859. Instruments like NASA's Parker Solar Probe provide a constant stream of information and data to scientists so that such events can be predicted and measures taken to prevent catastrophic damage to the worldwide power grid. But what do you think? What impact would such a geomagnetic storm have on the Earth today? How resilient would you be in the event of disruptions to the power grid? Would you like a deeper dive into the science of coronal mass ejections and solar flares? Drop a comment below. As always, thank you for joining us on our journey to discover the cosmos. Catch you next time on Hidden in the Stars.